Welcome back. Hey, I promised you that we had some uh, unboxing videos to do, and one of them is this nice new PSA dagger that I got in. That's right. I thought I'd try myself with a dagger because, you know, I'm thinking about getting back into the security thing again, uh, doing some securities maybe, I don't know, for our school around here. We'll just see what the opportunities are. I think with the coming days that are coming up, things are going to get uh, a little, you know, a little less safe, right? I think we all know that and can feel that. We can see the stories on TV where uh, things are ramping up. We're having abductions uh, at people's doorsteps. We're having push-ins, uh, robberies. We're having, uh, you know, uh, carjackings in broad daylight. People stealing people's watches at a stoplight. I mean, just crazy stuff, right? So it's time to be aware, right? Like Jack would say, Black Scout Survival, being strapped and dangerous and staying frosty while you're that way, right? So that being said, I wanted to get myself a, uh, maybe a duty rig if it works out and everything works out with it and it's nice and reliable, right? I've got other things to choose from, but I wanted to get something uh, and it was a good deal. At the time, it was Labor Day sales and uh, let me tell you what, all of this that I'm going to show you, I got for $409, right? That's just incredible for a Glock clone style uh, firearm, don't you think, right? First off, it comes with this nice case, right? Which is a nice fitted range case, right? That's really, really kind of cool. It's got a little thing up here where you can put description or your name or please return to Benny in case... You find this laying around because the owner has dementia or something like that, which I don't, but just saying. Anyway, it says PSA on the front right there. See that? It's got nice embroidered PSA on there. It's got a nice handle just like that, and it's nice and slim. It's a nice, nice bag, right? But you also get a box full of magazines. That's right. First off, you get, you get a total of, and the other ones are in the bag here. I'll show you, but you get a total of one two three four 27 round nine millimeter mags which is great if you like things hanging out the bottom and want to act all gangster like but but it's still it is good to have if you wanted to use this say for shooting idpa or something like that it'd be a good uh a good thing as long as the length fit in the box you know they have requirements but uh other than that they are p mags they're not original glock mags but this a uh, firearm will take lock mag, so that's good to know. Uh, but uh, you know, I have not had any real issues with the other firearms I use that take P mags. Uh, the thing about P mags is, and I'll show you here in just a second. Oh wait, and then it comes with five 15 round magazines, right? For like a Glock 19, which is what this would be, right? Because it's a compact, right? Um, and uh, so that's 10 magazines. Right, that's ten right there. So even at ten dollars a piece, right, that's like a hundred bucks right there, right? Right. So that being said, uh, we'll get into the bag. So as you can see, it comes with a nice fitted bag. It's enough to fit the instruction manuals and stickers and all kinds of good stuff like that. And of course, this bag right here, which I would use for a baton or a flashlight, is there to house and make sure that my lock is. See that? My lock is nice and, and safe and secure, um, you know, because we got to have that. So it has a, as you can see, it has a little pouch for that, right? And as you can see here, we've got a holder that has a strap for the muzzle of the firearm. You've got another accessory bag there that's for it's something you want to put in there, whether it's a flashlight or, or something else. You can see i got one of the magazines, the 27 rounders that fits in there. And I've got two of the 15 round magazines in there, right? And it still has enough for another mag right there. There's one in the firearm, unloaded, and uh, a box of ammo. So that's just perfect to go to the range with, right? So first off, we'll make sure to show, uh, show clear this firearm. So we're going to take the magazine out, as you can see, orange follower. That's always nice on these P mags. Now, that's the one thing. They're not like a Glock mag. They don't have steel inserts in them. 
Um, but like I said, I haven't had any issues with these or anything, but you could easily swap them up if you're worried about it with Glock uh, magazines. But we are going to test this at the range in future videos and just see how it performs. This is about going for the pros and cons. Now, we'll go ahead and lock this back, and as you can see, we've got nothing in the chamber, and we've got nothing in there, right? Right, okay. So, some things that I really like about this, we'll go over just out of the box looking at it. One, for that price, you got a threaded barrel with a barrel protector on it, right? And that barrel protector even has an O-ring that makes it fit nice and tight so it doesn't work its way loose like a lot of them do, right? So that's kind of nice. You've got yourself suppressor height sights. Now these aren't third co-witness, although you could get it in third co-witness or you could get it in just standard height, but I wanted suppressor height uh, sights on there. Now they're not, as you can see, they're not night sights. They're just blacked out sights, which I thought at the time I was getting it for uh, with night sights, but of course, you know, how greedy can I be, right? It's already a good deal at 409, but it did come with the suppressor height sights, and these are good sights. They're steel, um, and uh, you know, the back one has a set screw that keeps it in place, so it is windage adjustable. And the other one, of course, just like a Glock, has a, uh, an, a kind of a, a, a bolt type thing that goes up through into the site that tightens it down. Now you can see here you'll say people go well hey wait it's missing the R you know the cut for an optic site. Does it come that way and do you have to order the the thing on there? And the funny thing is I thought the same thing at first too. I thought great they forgot you know because at first I wasn't gonna run an optic on this because you know me I'm kind of a, a traditional iron sights type of person but you know, I thought on this one, maybe I'd give it a chance, right? Especially since I thought that they just got, went ahead and, and forgot the, the plate that goes on there. But if you reach in here, you'll find, where is it? They did send the plate right here in with all the instructions and stuff. They just didn't put it on first. They want to make sure you lock tight that on if you're going to do it, I guess. Or I don't know, maybe it just saves them time to have it in the package. Or maybe they just want to encourage you to put a side on it, right? But, as you can see, it has, oh, get it right, it does have the filler for where there's going to be an optics cut, right? Now, some other things I noticed on this that I think are, you know, upgrades compared to a Glock. One, the styling is a little bit more modern than a Glock. I think Glock is time to step up and get modern in that. Even all of the aftermarket companies are starting to do lightning cuts. And, and you know, if you look on Palmetto State Arms, you'll be able to find that there's all kinds of slides you can get that have, you know, uh, different designs where you can see through to the barrel where it has lightning cuts. Uh, it also has ported, you know, I think there's a ported one, whatnot. Uh, and they also have one where the rear sight is mounted actually here and the and the RMR site or your, your dot site, whatever you're going to put on there, your electronic is actually behind this. Now something interesting about that, I have a different firearm I'm going to review in the future and uh, it's actually called a quick acquisition site and it's kind of along the same lines but it's a little bit different and it actually makes you be able to find your front sight to your rear sight tons faster. Now, it's on a shorter radius, but it, it works so much quicker, but that's another time. So as you can see, we've got, we've got, good, uh, we've got our good charging striations in the back here. We've got our charging cuts in the front there too, but it's also got your not only weight reduction, but basically these are anti-snag cuts or your carry cuts, they call them, where it bevels off the top here and it bevels off the front there. And then there's even another bevel right there, right? Just to keep things nice and smooth and slender in the front. So as this comes out of the holster, it comes out with no snags, no problems whatsoever, right? It does have a uh, an accessory rail here for a front light, uh, which we will be putting one of those on there. But you can see it only has one cut in there. And I really don't like that because even with all of the options, it never fails that it's not perfect for where exactly where you want it. So we're probably in a video going to add another notch right through there 
because there's I want it closer to this trigger guard than it's able to be set up for. So that's something that I consider a con, right? I think that that should, this plate could have been smaller, just like in a Glock, and these could have had a couple of them at least in there, a couple more. I do like the way that it has a scalloped trigger guard here. I do like the fact that it has an undercut here, although the undercut right there, it's a little bit sharp on its transition, so we'll be smoothing that out and doing that in a video where we'll smooth out here and we'll smooth out here, right? And then we may even put a double undercut here. It just depends on if I think it's necessary and if there's enough meat there. That one's kind of controversial. I don't know that it gives you really much of a higher grip. I mean, how much higher is a sixteenth of an inch or so going to get you uh, control of the firearm, right? However, it does have, as you can see here, it does have the rail cut into the slide there, which is something on the newer generations, which is a place to index one, your finger here, and on this side, it's a place to index your thumb and put a little down pressure on there. And that is one thing we'll probably be doing in the future is, is we will be going through and kind of maybe building that up and stippling it a little bit so that there's a little bit of a shelf there, right? Just to help aid in the grip of the firearm, right? Give you another index point, right? Now, one thing I want to point out that I think is a plus right here is you notice the trigger isn't a blade style like on a Glock where it has the blade in the center, right? This has got a pivoting trigger that does about the same thing, but the fact is this is a, as a wider surface across here and I like that better. It feels better, it indexes better on the tip of my finger right here um, and plus the trigger as we will double check here right you'll notice it's a not bad trigger so you, you got your take up then you reach a wall a little creep and then it goes and it's not very heavy I'd say it's about a about a four, four and a half, maybe, maybe even three if you're lucky, or three and a half, but I think it's about a four pound, a four and a half pound trigger. Then the reset, well, it probably won't do it because this is not in it. Oh wait, got it. There we go, got to cycle it, dumb, dumb. And then reset, very short, very short take up on that, and then go. So. It actually, in my opinion, has a lot nicer trigger than a Glock does, and I'm looking forward to getting out to the range and testing that. Now, uh, same sort of controls as a Glock right here. You've got your slide stop here. It's not ambidextrous. Uh, a lot of things are the same. The takedown lever is the same. Uh, the, but the thing that is different about this that I really like is the contour of the grip. The grip is nothing like a Glock. Uh, it is actually less square, as you can see, right here, it tends to narrow up and have a hump on the back here. Now it doesn't have changeable back straps, but to be quite honest with you, in all of the Glocks that I've gotten, I pretty much just leave it the way it is out of the box. I don't add all those extra thicknesses on there. Now that's, you know, because of maybe if somebody with a lot bigger hands might want to do that. but. I love the way that this has a hump right here on the back, as you can see here, right? And the way it kind of narrows and rounds down, it's not as square and blocky as a Glock. It's got good stippling on it or good texture on it right here, right? I don't feel like I'm going to lose a grip on this. It's got a nice pronounced beaver tail back in here, right? So you can get a nice high grip. I tend to like to grip my guns up high like this to where, you know, I'm risking the slide coming across there, but I'm used to that. Um, and uh, it has a, you know, even at this, I haven't had a, a situation yet where I've accidentally bumped that, that uh, magazine release. But as you can see, it does fall free. Now, there is some people out there that are saying that they had it first, they were having magazines fall out. Since then, I think they've worked on that a little bit, that the mags, they're still a little loose in there, but you don't want them to be tight, but they're not as rattly, and they tend not to fall out as much. They were having some magazines fall out. Some people still say with the big 20, you know, the big uh, 27 rounders, as you can see empty there, the big 27 rounders, that they want to fall out too, but I have yet, for this one, 
to fall out, but it still falls free. So we'll test that at the range with, with ammo in it and stuff and see if we have any failures there. Uh, other than that, you know, I think it's a, it's a, the finish is a great finish on it. Um, the barrel is a great uh, finish on the barrel, as you can see here, right? It does come with a steel guide rod rather than a plastic guide rod. I think that that's a plus. And uh, we can take a look at the inside here. As far as that goes, those are pretty much standard Glock parts, pretty well interchangeable with all your fancy triggers if you wanted to put it on there. But we're just going to go ahead and test it just out of the box with its normal trigger in there. And then, as you can see right here, it's kind of just got your standard Glock configuration with a back plate, uh, your uh, firing pin uh, safety plunger, that's for your drop safe as well, uh, as well as the trigger safe. It's got your striker right there, you've got your barrel, and you've got your retained spring and uh, uh, guide rod, right? So we can take this. And, and you know if I wanted to unscrew that we could take the barrel all the way out just like you do a Glock but so we'll put that back in there and it goes together the same way just click it in there right we're gonna put this back on and just like that we're good so as you can see, you know, it's got some nice styling right there. I mean, it really is a nice, nice looking, nice, well done uh, firearm. Like I said, we're going to, now that what are we going to do to it to, to jazz it up a little bit? Well, one thing we're going to do is we're going to switch out these to suppressor height night sights. Um, I'm just a firm believer in night sights because I've had to use them in the past and they do show up bright as day when you need them. You can see them and they're there. I think that that's really important. And there's something that just won't fail on you, right? A good set of iron sights just are there. And you should be used to shooting with iron sights. I am. But on this one, we are going to go ahead and put a Hollow Sun 407 on it, uh, which is the one that has the Shake Awake and the solar backup on it. Uh, and I believe it is a green. It could be a red dot, but it doesn't matter really to me. And we're going to mount that on there and try it out with that. Uh, I'm not a real fan of carry guns, but, and when I say that, I'll preface that. I'm not a real fan of micro carry guns, the real small ones like the 365 XL and whatnot, having uh, optics or dots on the back, unless you're really going to practice with them a lot, because with that slide moving back and forth and the dot being mounted on that, there is a lot of rotation like this where you will or could lose the dot, but it's, you know, some will say it's not any different than losing the front sight, but when you're used to it and you practice a lot, that front sight pretty much comes right back. That red dot, sometimes people have to hunt around for it a lot, and it's a lot of movement when it's on that slide. It's different if it's mounted on the frame, but when it's on that slide, I just think that, that and too, that's a lot of pounding for those I've heard of of uh, pins or the screws shearing off here. Um, that's why they put these extra stoppers on or these extra little recoil lugs on there is to lessen that. The first ones didn't have those and they were having those shear off all the time. Now you have a bolt stuck in your in your slide, right? Now this is a stainless steel slide with their CTS coating on it, I believe it's called, as well as the barrel has that same coating. Uh, it's a really good durable coating. Uh, there's no blends in it. It just looks great. Uh, now another thing we are going to do besides putting an optic on it and trying that out is we are going to um, replace this back plate with, uh, uh, with, with, with a charge enhancer is what I call it. Or basically it's a back plate with two little ears on it and two little hooks on it. And the reason for that is, is if you do get hurt, say in one arm, you can still charge the firearm with one hand uh, by hooking it on your belt or your jeans or your shirt or whatever need be. Um, so we're going to put one of those on the back as well. A lot of firearms are, are, uh, are coming out now uh, in these carry guns with little ones milled into the back here. This, the lacerations will stick out further. 
uh, to kind of do the same thing. Uh, this one doesn't have that, so we're going to add it so that people can see that there's an option out there where you can add that. We are going to stipple and build up this front area right here a little bit so that we can get a thumb rest on there. And uh, we're not going to do the same on the other side. We're just going to use the little divot right here, right, to index our finger for safety, right? Uh, I think we're going to leave the trigger the way it is. I think I want to leave the trigger and all the internal parts just the way they are so that that way if I ever was involved in an incident, I'm not putting a lightweight trigger on there. I think this is being a stock trigger and a good stock trigger so far. Uh, I'm good with that. And then we're going to go out and of course we're going to test those uh, uh, magazines, those Magpul magazines all out. Make sure I have no failures. Make sure this runs the ammo. Make sure I don't have any droppage of the magazines in shooting situations. That would be bad. Um, and uh, let's see, what else was there? Oh, and we're going to add a, uh, I believe it's a TLR-8 to the front here, which is a light, a 500 lumen light that mounts right here. And we're going to have to put in another rail spot right here for it so that it comes back and touches against the trigger guard here. Um, but then we're going to mount that TLR-8, and that 8 does have a laser on it as well, but I pretty much get it because it has a 500 lumen light on it, and it's a nice one that touches real easy to, to go. It's real durable, and it doesn't really stick out. It's not big. It doesn't come out here. It doesn't stick out past the sides much. It's a really good option for going on here. So stay tuned for the future videos on that where we'll be mounting those things up, going to the range, and getting this thing tested, right? I think it's going to be a lot of fun and basically like you saw all here you get for 409 that's incredible i can tell you what because most glocks these days are going to run you five to six hundred dollars or more right right so and i know there's other ones out there like garrison or whoever makes a lot of good stuff now uh that are clones of other things but uh, i just wanted to show you this is a great clone of a Glock that I think is a great option for people out there that leaves you enough money to where you can put the additions on and still be close to the price of a standard Glock, right? So until next time, be safe, be secure, always be aware of your surroundings, right? Be getting ready and prepared for anything that may come ahead or come your way and be getting prepared. And if you've got it, carry it and if you're carrying it get out there into the range and practice with it not only for your safety but for the safety of others i got to work on my ending again i'm a little out of practice but that's okay because i'm human you're human and that's all right right but what we all need to be doing is coming together and helping each other out for the challenges ahead adios